I promise you that 1976 is unlike any Five Nights at Freddy's animation you've ever seen. It's like an 80s anime series, but also a FNAF VHS. While the backgrounds and animatronics are all rendered in a very realistic way, the characters themselves are hand-drawn cartoons. The closest comparison for the mostly 2D animation style would be The Walton Files, and like that series, 1976 adapts the concepts of Five Nights at Freddy's but using a completely unique setting, with new characters, a new location, and a meaningful twist on the series' core premise. However, in spite of this, the series proudly proclaims its FNAF inspiration right at the start. The series begins by introducing us to Daniel J. Schmidt, the founder of Jackie and Friends Sandwicheria. The Sandwicheria is a family entertainment restaurant featuring Jackie and the Carrot Farm Band, Scratch the Cat, Fury Ferret, the titular rabbit Jackie DeHare, and Quack the Duck, but we'll get to them in a second. 1976's pilot episode begins with an old television blaring static in a living room at night before quickly transitioning to the tape itself, a promotional video made in celebration of Jackie's grand opening. Now, uh, tell me, Mr. Schmidt, how does it feel owning the most advanced entertainment center of the decade? Well, it honestly feels like a dream come true. And if I'm being honest, I never expect this place to just skyrocket so fast. One moment, I asked Funhouse whether I can cooperate with them with my little idea in mind. And the next thing you know, Jackie's is here. According to the interview with Daniel Schmidt, the restaurant immediately took off in popularity, which his wife Julia attributes to her husband's eccentric genius. As long as Daniel's making money and serving smiles to everyone around, sure. He is a very enterprising man. You don't see one in a hundred people making life-size dancing robots and serving delicious meals to people, now do you? Daniel also mentions an apparent partnership with Funhouse Inc., though it isn't made clear exactly who they are or what they do. Tell me who is watching this. According to your house now, more fun and games are coming soon. Keep your eyes open. Plus, with the help of Funhouse Inc., you have no idea what we have in store just for you. We then see a timestamp for August 17th, 1975, which is sort of weird because the tape that plays afterwards is clearly a pre-recorded, edited promotional video that wouldn't have been shot at a specific date and time, but whatever. The point is, the restaurant just opened. In the tape, we're introduced to Jackie and the Carrot Farm Band, and it's revealed that the aforementioned Funhouse Inc. worked in collaboration with Daniel Schmidt in order to build these cutting-edge animatronics. Ladies and gentlemen, Funhouse Incorporated is proud to announce a magical new restaurant made for both kids and adults alike, Jackie and Friends Sandwicheria. Come along with us and we'll take an exciting peek at the grand opening of Jackie's, which opened just yesterday morning at Preston Road. Say hello to the Carrot Farm Band starring four furry cartoon animals made by the creative brains of Daniel J. Schmidt and the hard workers at Funhouse Incorporated. The show consists of both an animatronic show and a light show that plays while you sit down and eat your meals. This is Jackie D. Hare, a computer programmed rabbit who acts as the front man of the Carrot Farm Band. Every eight minutes, these puppet-like animatronics open their curtains and sing tunes and tell jokes for everyone around. We had a little talk with one of these executives, James Deacon, about Jackie's and how it differs from the regular fast food experience. I find it astonishing with the idea of a restaurant with games, food, prizes, and entertainment all in one place. It's pretty unusual with the technology we have today. You get the concept of singing animals on stage, birthday parties for children, and an amazing amount of varieties of food there, with the main course being sandwiches and subs. While some of the voice acting is a bit amateurish, it kind of works because these employees aren't supposed to be trained actors. They're just regular people thrust into the limelight and compelled to participate in a promotional video. Furthermore, I'm certainly not one to talk when it comes to voice acting. My best performance was playing a plushie dying in agony. Wait, don't shoot. I'm not like the others. I'm still safe. <laughs> Ah! 
This section of the tape is pretty standard, but we do learn one interesting tidbit. Alongside the four animatronics that are bolted to the stage, there's a special walk-around version of Jackie Rabbit, who appears during birthday parties and other special events. Presumably, unlike the rest of the cast, this is a human in a costume. On special occasions, such as birthday parties, a walk-around version of the titular Jackie Rabbit will come out of the guest star stage and entertain patrons alongside the singing robots. The tape moves on to an interview with Joni Carmella, one of the Funhouse Inc. engineers responsible for maintaining the robots. While on the topic of these robots, we talk with one of the technicians operating in the restaurant to ask her how these characters move and walk. Tell me, how do your little animal friends move around and sing? Well, this is all electronic puppeteering which means that we are capable of controlling these animatronics and giving them some lively spirit. Not unlike a puppet. Okay, bitch, that was the most suspicious thing you could have possibly said. Spirits, puppets, the fact that she's like glancing around and like, uh. For example, this control pad has all the buttons and switches needed to control one animatronic, manipulating everything from the ears to the feet we have at least two people operating for each character when we do show tapes. Jackie and his friends are powered by compressed air, with each character following commands from a computer inside them, which sends a signal towards what part of the figure should move. Here, would you like a backstage demonstration? A birthday party is about to begin. Sure, go ahead. We then get to see one of Jackie and his band's performances, and it's awesome. It's perhaps the most authentic representation of what the animatronic performances at Showbiz Pizza and Chuck E. Cheese were actually like. They were these bizarre, awkward comedy sketches. Aaron Fector voiced basically everyone and sang the songs. It, it, it was very surreal. Again, your smile's never get old. And they're surely never as long as me. <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid you have an age well. <laughs> yeah. Anywho, this next performance is for our very first birthday here at Jackie's. So come on, everyone, don't be shy. Let's gather around and celebrate this special occasion. Oh, goody. That's me. Hey, get out my head now. Not in a million years, you noisy nut. Close your curtains, you're off script. Yeah. Bye. Get a load of them, folks. The engineers broke the barrel with every single piece that came in his box, but they somehow forgot his John Cerebrum. <laughs> hey! <clears throat> now, let's have our little birthday kids stand up so we can find out who we're celebrating here. Don't make me unbolt myself from the stage now and come looking for you. Yoo-hoo, but are you birthday kid? We're ready to party. Don't be shy now. Don't be hiding from us now, you sneaky little shovel. Oh, there he is. Ah, there you are. I figured as much with that birthday hat on you. Come on up to my stage and let's sing a little song together. Come on, Scratch, play the tunes. All right, yo. Let me just tune up my guitar here. <laughs> oh. Okay, I'm gonna get you. 
The next scene once again features Joni from Funhouse Inc. who demonstrates how the animatronic performers are driven using a mechanical endoskeleton. Over here in the corner of this room, we have a suitless figure, which we use for testing purposes. Of course, we gotta make sure that every animatronic on stage moved just like our friend here. Every time a valve's leaking or a cylinder breaks, I like to talk to the robots as if they were alive while I'm fixing them. I mean, that's my job. I would say things like, come on Jackie, you're supposed to move your arms. Or, hey Scratch, it's time for your show. Open your eyes. <laughs> and do you enjoy working here and fixing your animal friends? Well, of course. This is my dream job. I've been studying robotics since I was a kid. It's a pleasure helping Jackie's and Funhouse Incorporated with this spectacular critter show. And now we come to the master of ceremonies, Daniel Schmidt, the founder of this whole restaurant. Hello, Mr. Schmidt. Hello. It's nice to meet you. I'm curious, Mr. Schmidt, what made you want to start all of this recently? Uh, great question. A couple years ago, I got a major degree in engineering. I'm mainly known for creating life-sized mechs that move and speak. Wait, wait, wait. You built life-sized mechs that move and speak? And you started a sandwicheria? You'd probably make a lot more money as, like, a military contractor. I realized that one day, I could just establish a family diner with my robotic skills. <laughs> I could just establish a family diner with my robotic skills. Duh, it's the most obvious thing in the world. So I said to myself, hey, why don't I put my mechanical works into action and make something anyone could experience while eating good quality food? So I went to work. I discovered a company by the name of Funhouse Inc, known for creating the best amusement areas around the US. When I got there, I made a deal with them to help with Jackie's, which became a restaurant experience unlike any other. But hey, I don't want to take all the credit, you know? I want to thank my wife, my friends, and our boss Francis for putting together these furry friends and this wonderful diner for everyone. They deserve more credit than I do. The Funhouse Company's main aim for Jackie's is to bring a fresh, new, and cutesy environment for restaurant dining in every state. With Jackie's being just 10 miles from your neighborhood, your kids will never be bored again with the Carrot Farm Band. This is James Calloway reporting from Plano, Texas, hoping that our experience today will bring friends and family from all over to Jackie and Friends Sandwicheria, where the fun never stops. Jackie and Friends Sandwicheria, come join the fun today. We're dying to see you. Hey, hey, that was a great show, everyone. All right, me and the gang are going to take a little break for a while. So hang on tight. We'll catch you later. See ya. After the promotional video ends, the episode returns to the living room from the start, Daniel Schmidt's living room, and we learn that it's been one year since the fucking... Sandwicheria. <laughs> the fuck is a sandwicher? Bro, that's why you should have been suspicious from the start because I ain't never heard of no sandwicheria. <laughs> the episode returns to the living room from the start, Daniel Schmidt's living room, and we learn that it's been one year since the promotional video and the opening of Jackie's Sandwicheria. As the TV blares static, we can see that downstairs in the basement, Daniel is hard at work when he receives a surprising phone call. Hello, Schmidt's residence. This is Daniel Schmidt on the phone. Schmidt, it's Francis speaking. Oh, Francis. What are you doing up so late? What do you need? Daniel, listen. It has been two weeks since the day that kid went missing in Jack. I bet you the cops are going to be on our ass about this sooner or later. Oh, God. I'm so sorry, Mr. Flasier. I'm doing the best I can to think of something just to make Jackie's more safer. Please, just give me more time, okay? Well, you better have something by Friday, got that? I'm not having another little prat going missing and losing our good reputation. Especially not so soon. <sighs> I apologize for the long wait, sir. I'll, I'll get to it by tomorrow. I promise. Hmm. Better get going on that, then. Have yourself a good night, Daniel. You too. It would seem that two weeks prior, a child went missing at Jackie's. Daniel seems torn up about it, and his boss is demanding he do something about it. It's not really clear. 
God, God, come on, Daniel. Think, please. Just watch something that could keep this diner safe. Uh, this could, it could be anything. Anything. It. In a desperate bid to make the sandwicheria safer, Daniel comes up with a bizarre idea. Hello? Joni, meet me at the warehouse tomorrow at noon. I've got a new idea. And there we go. Let's turn you on and introduce you to your new home. Oh god, I hope this works. Well, that was actually amazing. Damn, that was so cool. Dude, the fuck did you expect was gonna happen? <laughs> Come on, man. You brought an evil robot to life. You knew what you were doing. While 1976's pilot is a bit rough around the edges, it's one of the most unique, interesting FNAF animations ever made. And I really encourage everyone to check it out and support the series because I'd love to see more stuff like this. The episode returns to the living room from... The episode returns to the living room... The episode... Re the episode returns to the living room from... The episode returns to the living room from the start. Fuck. The episode returns to the living room. The episode returns to the living. The episode returns to the living room from the start. The episode returns to the living room from the start. Daniel Schmidt's living room. And we learn that it's been one year since the promotional video was filmed and. The episode returns to the living room. 